Well, hello there. Um, we're going to start off at the beginning. That's a great place to start with algebra, isn't it? And uh, today we're going to introduce some of the building blocks that we use in math. And that would be the different uh, different sets of numbers. So um, actually there's a few things that you probably want to have nearby today. It would be a really good idea to have a notebook to write some of these things down or to to draw um, the representations of the, the number systems we're going to be looking at today. Uh, pencil would be good uh, if there's going to be some homework after this. There's some of uh, this magic paper available to you, either from the classroom or online. I think that's about it. If you've got your, your Algebra 1 book, that'd be a good place to start, too. Um, alrighty then. Let's talk about uh, how we classify things. If you have taken uh, a life science class, you know that classification is a big deal. In, uh, in life science with animals and plants and all kinds of other things with funguses and with amoebas and all that kind of thing. And, and we've built these systems of putting things into categories so that we can study them in a more meaningful way. Okay, so if you, if you have done any of that, let's take uh, the example of animals. And I'll get maybe a different color here. No, this is not a different color. But let's start with your cat Mimi, okay? There's Mimi. And, uh, and Mimi, let's put a little mark there, it's a French cat. And uh, Mimi has certain characteristics about Mimi that makes Mimi Mimi. Mimi likes to, uh, to eat dog food. Uh, Mimi likes to scratch on your couch. Mimi is severely overweight because you feed it too much. And uh, Mimi is uh, a lazy glutton. Okay, there's Mimi. All right, those things are all true of Mimi. Okay, well, Mimi is just a cat, and there are many kinds of, like, let's say, domestic house cat, pet cats, and uh, that would be a bigger category. Domestic cats, or we could say, you know, pet cats is a bigger category, and Mimi's in there, and so is Fluffy, and Squishy, and uh, Dig Dug, and Paul. They're all in there, but they all fit in that uh, category of domestic cats. We know that cats are not the only, domestic cats, home cats, are not the only kinds of cats that there are in this world. So we're going to go a little bit bigger here. We're going to draw another category of cats, and that would be like the family of cats. Feline. Okay, well, that's going to include tigers and lions, but not bears. But it's going to include uh, bobcats and all those cats, those big cats, small cats, hairless cats, chihuahua cats. Are there chihuahua cats? I don't know. But they would all be in there, too. So let's go ahead and put lions and tigers, etc. in there. Of course, Mimi is a feline. Mimi is a cat. Mimi is a domestic cat, and Mimi is Mimi. Okay, we'll go up one step from there. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family. Okay, the order that cats are in is another category, and that would be that uh, the cats are mammals. Agreed? Mommy kitties feed their baby kitties with milk and they have whiskers and hair. It's true. I've seen it. It's kind of gross, but they are. And they eat their placenta. It's disgusting. But they're mammals, okay? So that's a bigger category. Mimi is a mammal. Mimi is a feline. Mimi is a domestic cat. Uh, a lion. Mimi is not a lion, though. So there's in but not in in some of these cases. Uh, mammals are animals. They're of the kingdom Animalia. I'll go with that and just keep it uh, go from there. Kingdom. There are other layers in there, but this will get the point in here that uh, Mimi is in the kingdom Animalia. King, uh, Mimi is an animal. 
but maybe it made me act like a person. Okay, so that's how this works. Now we're gonna do it with uh, we're gonna do it with numbers. We're not gonna do it with all numbers, but we're gonna do it with what in math is called real numbers. We have a thing in math like this. Maybe you've seen this before, huh? Uh, I bet you have because it was probably sitting on your desk in fifth or sixth grade forever for you to just see. You got numbers, you got the alphabet, you got all that stuff. It's like right there on your name tag. This is called the real number line. Now only certain numbers are given a little thing there, but we know that one half would fit on here and so would the square root of two and pi. Pi would be right about there. So this is called the real number line. We want to define these things though. What makes a number a real number? As opposed to what, what else could we have? Imaginary is the other kind. That, uh, that you get to later on in math. It's not considered to be a real number, though it has a real, real number part to it. Okay, there is an infinite number of numbers on this real number line. Like I said, we could put in all the fractions in there. We could put in what's called irrational numbers, square roots. Um, you could put in what are called transcendental numbers like pi that just keep going and going and going. Um, yes, they're all in there. So we're going to play the same game as we did with the cat thing here. I'm going to start with the smallest category. Have you ever seen those little Russian nesting dolls where there's like a little teeny doll inside and then you, you put a doll on top of that and you put another doll on top of that and then you get this big thing here. Uh, I had one that was like, uh, oh, my friend had one that was like Transformers inside of Transformers or whatever. Okay. So let's start off with the, with the smallest, most specific category here. And uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to start, uh, we're going to give it some constraints. We're going to give it some rules that have to be true for these types of numbers. And then we're going we're gonna to add more qualities to our numbers and have bigger number sets. We're going to use that word here. A set is a collection of things. The book says it's a collection of objects. So like if you've got a set of playing cards, or you've got a set of dominoes, or a set, you know, you've got a collection of things. It has its own characteristics. Each thing in the set is called an element. Okay, that's kind of the basic things. Oftentimes you write in math, you're going to uh, write the fact that we've got a set we're going to put whatever is in that set inside of brackets. Uh, another way that they indicate sets of specific types, like the ones we have in the list, natural, whole, integers, is to give them letters. And they, they kind of do like this outline-y thing. Here's the natural numbers. That letter represents the set of natural numbers. You've got, got whole numbers. You've got uh, integers. It's usually an R, I think. Uh, rationals, irrationals, they all each have their own symbol that represents all of them, so they won't have to sit there and list an infinite number of these things. So let's start with our smallest, most nested category, and that would be the natural numbers. The natural numbers are the ones you can do this with. You notice I started with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up. Okay, so it starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we just put dot, 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 and that will go forever that way. It would only be, it wouldn't even include 0. It would be right here at 1, and right here at 2, and right here at 3, and it doesn't count the half Z's and all that kind of stuff. It's just the ones that we got whole number of things. Uh, in fact, uh, if we want to talk about whole numbers, that's just one thing bigger. Whole numbers include all the natural numbers, this bubble here. Okay, it's that and the number zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and up. Okay, zero is conceptually, uh, mathematically, has only been around since like the sixth century. AD, maybe 5th century, as an actual symbol. Usually they just had a blank space there. But uh, that's our next layer up, is adding the number 0 into it. 
Okay. Uh, one layer up from that would be integers. Integers include both of these, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and all of their opposites, or the negative numbers as well. So we go dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so we include now the negatives, the opposites of all of the natural numbers. That's what we include now with integers. And then we go up another layer, and we're going to include one more specific thing here. We can have what's called rational. Rational, main root here is ratio. This means that we can include fractions. You'd probably say, well, one's not a fraction. Well, yeah, it is. I can write it as 1 over 1 and 2 over 1 and 3 over 1. I can write them as the ratio of two natural numbers or two, uh, two whole numbers. I think that's the most common definition for a rational uh, number. The ratio of two um, whole numbers. I can even do this. 0 over 1. So 0 We'll count in there. But now we're adding things like one half and one third and two fifths. Anything we can write as a fraction counts, and these all count and can be written that way as well. That, that's a handy tool to have in math. Um, the next layer up includes what? Uh, irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that can be written in the form a, or sorry, cannot be written as the quotient of two integers. All right, here's where you start getting things like square roots and numbers like pi that don't have a normal decimal expansion. Like you can't just write it and it stops, like at 0.25, and then you stop. These ones keep going, like one like actually what one-third would be. 0.3333333 goes on and on and on and on and on. Or square root of 2 is 1.414 blah 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 blah. And it keeps going. So that would be irrational. You couldn't write it as the ratio of two whole numbers. You can't write pi as a ratio. The 22 cents is close. It's not exactly there. Um, okay, so if we include rational and I guess irrational is its own category. If we put both of those in the same uh, in the same thing, rational and irrational, then we have the real numbers. That's our biggest bubble, our biggest thing there. So anything that's inside of something else that counts. Okay, we got rational and irrational, and then real numbers is the umbrella over all that. And then I'll ask questions about five. Okay, they say, what categories does 5 belong to? Well, obviously, it's a real number. It is, uh, it's not irrational, it's rational. Uh, it's an integer, it's a whole number, and it's a natural number. But 1 -fifth is not irrational, it's rational, it's an integer, it's a whole number. Uh, but it's not a whole number or a natural number. Um, actually, it's not an integer, it stops right there. It's real and rational. But that's it. Or 3 square root 2, we put it into this category right here. It's a real number and irrational, but it doesn't fit any of the other characteristics. That's pretty much the way that this one works. They want to know, can I count it? Is it in more than one set? What are the characteristics of this number? Like, which ways can I use it? And it's very helpful to keep those things in mind when we're doing math. I can do this operation with this because it's a real number. I can't do this operation. I can put it on the line. I can't put it on the line. Very important to know those types of things. So this lesson is mostly about um, which category does something fit in. Uh, there are some different versions of what I drew up on the board in various places. This is a Venn diagram or an Euler diagram just to help you kind of see uh, what's going on and how a number can fit in more than one category at once. Hope that helps and uh, we'll see you in class.